Next part of the painting process, we're going to do the drive shaft, the subframe slash uh, sway bar and power steering rack, and then the power plant frame. So this piece is really interesting. All that holds up the transmission and the differential in the RX-7 is this bracket that bolts them two together. The problem is when you're making high horsepower, these things crack in half. So what I'm doing is I'm purchasing a brace for the trainee and a brace for the diff. And then this will also be there. It keeps everything all nice and strong. This stuff isn't exactly rusty per se. Well, it's out of the car. It could use a fresh paint job just to give that extra layer of protection. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so now that we got the subframe kind of torn apart, we've got the front spindle assemblies removed. And one thing that I noticed when I did drive the car last that the ABS light was on. So I've got the wheel speed sensors removed and uh, they're just magnetic and they ride right above these. So we're gonna see which one of these, if the sensor is bad or if the module is bad, but we're gonna test both fronts here. So super easy to do gonna check is resistance so online everyone said that you need about 0.8 to uh, 1.2 K ohms so we're just gonna test that okay so that one is perfect 0.99 right in the range so I'm gonna test the second one And that one is bad. No bueno. So, this one was good. This one is bad. I figured while we got the car apart, we already know that the one wheel speed sensor is bad, the other one was good. Let's go ahead and check the rears. Uh, just while we're diagnosing, we already got the tool out. So I am gonna replace these brakes uh, when the car is redone. But you can see the wheel speed sensor is right here. And it well, it actually goes underneath, then up inside. So, I'm going to show you how to get to that. Okay, how to get to the rear wheel speed sensors, which are underneath these rear bins. And uh, the first step would be take out your rear partitioning board, which I don't have. Um, but then we'll just go from there. We need to get this side piece out. We need to take off this RX-7 side sill here, which should just yank out of the way like so. Now we need to take out that weather stripping. So just kind of yank on that. Get it out of the way. Next the seat belt goes through this piece so we need to get that seat belt nice and out of the way. So luckily down here at the bottom flip up the flip up the carpet there's a bolt down there. Take that out. So what I've been doing with the whole car is taking the bolts that are removed and putting them back into their respected spots so that way I don't lose anything because I don't exactly know my way around these cars too well yet. Alright, with that seat belt unbolted on the bottom, we're just going to feed her through the seat here. So that's good. Now we're just gonna have to pop this out. Now, fortunately or unfortunately for me, the previous owner that kind of removed things from this car didn't put all the snaps back in place, so there's a little bit of loose objects, but. So I just pulled these off of the sway bar of the car. And these are the rustiest pieces that I have, which that's uh, pretty good for my type of project. So you see there's a little bit of rust, just kind of rare. On the inside, it's kind of hard to get to. Um, this one's actually pretty good. That one's not terrible at all. But, ooh. Actually. Looking at these closer. Oh, 
Those are broken. So after even further inspection on the sway bars, it looks like someone's actually cut them. And uh, I was doing some research online about these things, trying to figure out what these parts were in the car. And these are actually for mounting the stock radiator setup, which I don't need. So I was getting ready to cut these off and uh, doing some more research online. I found these are pretty weak, the sway bar mounts. So I was going to box them in. And then I came across a post from uh, uh, a shop that does a lot of work with RX-7s. They say that most of their cars come in with bent passenger sway bar brackets. So, so I was looking pretty closely and I found this one is indeed bent. You can see it's pushed down right here. So that kind of sucks where this one is usable and you box it in but this one is bent. And you can tell when you put them side by side this one's not lining up quite right. So just add another thing to the list here. The RX-7 just as I painted the engine bay. Really nothing's changed with that. I've been working on seeing all the black parts off the RX-7. I'm just not looking forward to doing it so I've been slacking quite a bit. But I do have some parts for sale off the RX-7 I cleaned last night. This is the uh, Racing Beat dual tip exhaust. It's actually a cat back. I also got the Gretti electronic boost controller. So we've got all that going on in here after hours, of course. So here's something pretty neat. I've been using Scotch-Brite and cleaning off the aluminum on the headlight motors that flip them up and down. So you can see this one's super nice and clean, looks really detailed. Now this one I have not washed it off or anything, so it's still got dirt on it. But you can tell it's a little oxidized and it's kind of dark. So that Scotch-Brite's doing is just kind of giving it a little bit of a brighter shine. And it's turned out really, really nice. The only problem is that you do all this work and then the things mount like this up against the side of the body. So you're really only going to see, you know, maybe a hair of some of this, you know, some down in here. But it's all the little details that really make a restoration nice. So just knowing that it's clean makes me happy. So here's another good reason why we're ripping apart all the pieces of the car. Here is the heater line that goes from one side of the engine to the other and works its way into the heater core. There's just nothing but gunk on the inside of this thing, so we're gonna get her all cleaned out, get her repainted, and put back into the car. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the first batch of black parts getting ready to be painted. I can't fit quite everything inside of the tent, so we're going to have to do everything. Uh, the first stage will be doing all these parts. second stage is going to do uh, the rest of the parts like power steering rack and the hubs and spindles, all that good stuff. So I wanted to hang up everything and paint it properly. I mean, even these little tiny brackets that you could, you know, get away with spray painting. I want to make sure I paint it with some good stuff and, and really get some thick paint on there. I didn't want any just, the problem is spray paint's so thin, you know, they have to dilute it so much to get it through a spray can. This is the skid plate system for my V-mount intercooler radiator setup. That thing has solid steel, super thick. It's even got little tabs that go on the bumper. Windshield wiper arms, uh, that is the brace that goes between the transmission and the rear axle, sway bar, heater line, gas tank uh, strap, fuse block, uh, bracket of some sort, another heater thing, gas tank drive shaft, heater piece, windshield wipers, headlight brackets, headlight motors, oil catch can, hood latch, spare tire mount, Usually we got a lot of parts up here. We're doing it right. You know, I started sanding parts. I'm like, man, there's not really that much. And the more you keep going, you spend weeks and weeks sanding. And you're like, gosh, is it ever going to end? And you think, man, it's a small pile of parts. Why does it take me so long? But once you really hang things up and look at it in retrospect, there's a lot of stuff here. So why wouldn't I sandblast some things? Well, there are things that you could sandblast pretty easily. You know, like the sway bar would be a good one to do. But things like uh, the power plant frame is if you sandblast it, you're gonna get so much 
sand in between these little cracks, crevices, and you'll never be able to get paint in there. And that's just gonna accelerate rust even more. So I decided to just kind of hand sand everything and truly none of the stuff needed painted. I mean, they had a couple specks of rust here and there, but I wanted to make sure, go through, make sure the car is perfect because if you don't do it now, that's when you see cars in the future where they got a lot of surface rust on parts. And you know, things like the uh, windshield wiper arms, I mean, these were just starting to rust and I was like, you know what? Yeah, you don't see them, but just because you don't see them doesn't mean that they should start rusting. And that is why we've sanded everything down. So we're gonna go ahead and do a coat of primer and then we're gonna do some black and see what everything looks like. We got those parts all painted up with the single stage black, but unfortunately, check this out. This is a rag with acetone on it. Not good. So what happened? It seems kind of dry. We can fingerprint it. So here's what went down. This is the paint that I used for those parts. I um, need just single stage black. You can see it's just a blank can. And uh, I had this sitting around for about a year. It's been so long since I used it, you know. Looked at it, made sure there's no mixing label on the side. Went ahead, poured it in, sprayed it. So I ran out of this paint, so I go to the parts store and fortunately I was telling the guy there what I was doing and I was like, I'm just grabbing another one of these. He said, well, you're gonna get the hardener for it. I'm like, you know, what hardener? It doesn't say anything on the side here that needs anything. I was like, yeah, check out this sheet I got. So I look at it. Here's a little mix sheet. So it doesn't say on the can it needs mix, but on this mix sheet, which, you know, if you go buy a can of paint, they don't just give you this mix sheet. It says you need to mix it with reducer and hardener. So why, like on the primer here, same company, you know, on the primer they say mix this with this, and then, you know, one coat, yada yada. But this does not say anything about mixing. So, why they wouldn't label this is beyond me. So all this paint is non cured and it would forever be sticky. So, things just stick to the paint. So, unfortunately, we're having to take acetone and stripping off the paint on every single part that I painted. And we're going to repaint all that stuff tonight. It really sucks because it's taken me. I'm gonna say about 15 hours in labor at least doing this and then probably another $120 in paint and acetone and rag materials. Not a good day for the RX-7 project but at least everything will be done right. We're out here back at it as you saw in the prior clip we got everything cleaned up with all the acetone which was a miserable job. But we got everything painted and it's kind of nice to go to grab a part and the paint doesn't come off in your hand with it, so that's nice. Everything's good, hard. It even sounds different when you hit it. That's hilarious. Got as much of the big parts out of the way and finish as I could. So the idea is we're gonna go ahead and take these down, put up the other parts that are sitting out there, paint those, and then we'll be able to start putting everything back on the car. I have waited a couple days for all this stuff to dry off pretty good, because the problem is, uh, you know, we're not, we're not baking the paint in here, you know, Professionals that use paint boosts, they actually bake the paint. Unfortunately, we can't do that, so letting it sit for a few days just lets everything get good and cured. It's been about two months since we painted the car, so the paint should be really nice and hard on this and cured. Because if you go ahead and paint this one day, slap on parts the next day, it's just not quite there yet, so I'm glad this thing's had time to cure.